Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I want to let you know that I've listened to 16 minutes and 18 seconds of this video, how to legally never pay taxes again. It's done, I believe, with a software known as Doodly. And I will give him some credit because he explains exactly what you all need to know. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Tax credits, are they taxable? Those of you who have a SAP pack who are receiving tax credits from SATCOM, pay attention, or from your particular SAT pack, which is either the SAP pack 1, SAP pack 2s, the Omega, the Prime, the Plus SAP packs, those SAP packs all have a name. They're their own separate trust. If you're receiving tax credits from them, you're going to have to do your research to see if those tax credits are taxable, if they're considered capital gains. If they are, this is the video you're going to need to watch. Now remember, the tax credits are for a period of five years. So over a period of five years, these tax credits accumulated. It doesn't matter if you just bought it in 2020 or 2021 or 2019. It's still a five-year program. That's the maturity. We have the agreement to accelerate the maturity at our choosing okay now gentlemen is very well spoken go ahead tell them what you have to say and as we all learned in math class anything times zero is still going to be zero so they won't pay anything in taxes for the conversion they would continue now he's going to explain everything everything so all you got to do is listen Maybe two or three times so that you get it. Okay? Maybe two or three times so that you get it. Okay? Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody gave me tax credits, and I have to file my taxes. Do the tax credits count as income? Well, if they were given to me, then they might count as a gift. Oh, there are some technicalities, but... If it is an, an investment, uh-oh, then there's a problem. Because at the very beginning of the video, he explains about the three different types of income. Earned income, um, let me see. I, now I can't even remember all three of them. Of course, everybody knows about investment income, earned income, and portfolio income. Okay? Investment, portfolio earn income. Most rich people have portfolios. And the way they do their portfolio, they don't owe no bodies, bodies taxes. Because they get to write that junk off by the way they do their taxes. When Donald Gump said that taxes is a sport, he was telling the truth. Because you know, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Thus, it is a sport. Sorry that it ain't pulling up because all he was doing was letting you know about the three different forms of income. And he goes into everything. He literally takes his time explaining it to you using the Doodle software. I have the software. I paid for the software. I just haven't used the software. You know what I'm saying? I like the software. just haven't used the software. And I'm going to be needing to do the software. Hold on, y'all. As of the federal tax year 2020, the federal tax brackets for married couples break down like this. For the first $19,750 of taxable income, you pay 10% for a maximum. He breaks it all down. You know what he also talks about? Ladies and gentlemen, he also talks about the fact that the poverty rate, $12,800. For married couples, $24,800. Hold on now. Let me show y'all something that he and nobody else is going to show you. Oh, mama. He's going to tell us what our rights are. Pay attention to this right. Now that he argues, we don't want to have nobody arguing because then somebody going to come up with a presumption. That's why you don't argue in court, because that means that you're raising a presumption and you want somebody to argue back. 
Okay, you don't want no arguments. But there can be no tax upon a man's right to live and earn his bread by the sweat of his brow or the sweat of the brow of his head. Let's make it rhyme. Ain't that interesting? Why all colored folk got to rhyme when they talk? Because that's how we teach our children how to walk. Oh, you just so silly. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, do you see what it says here? The right to earn a living by pursuing the an ordinary occupation is protected by the Constitution? Yeah, it's called the right to live. The right to earn a living is a part of your right to live. It is a fundamental right, a natural right, an inherent right, one of the most sacred and valuable rights of a citizen. No one can tax you on your right to live, which includes your right to earn a living. Uh-oh. However, substantive due process does not provide an individual with unfettered right to earn a living in whatever way he or she desires. That's a lie. It does. It's, they told you common occupation. You get to choose what occupation you want. The courts don't get to choose it, nor does the government get to choose it. Now, can the government regulate certain businesses? Of course they can. But there are certain people out there, I just had a conversation earlier today with someone talking about a young man who literally used the regulations to make sure he ain't paying no taxes, not on none of his businesses. He ain't had to register none of his businesses because he followed the rules. Ladies and gentlemen, if you follow the rules, then you get what comes with that following of the rules. If you don't follow the rules, then you get what's come with not following the rules. Okay? Pay attention. The right to earn a living by working for wages is not a substantive privilege granted or permitted by the state. The state doesn't grant you the right or the privilege of working for wages. That's the payment for your labor. Okay, we got one other case, the Redfield versus Fitcher case. I'm going to show you in a minute. It is not a property right. It does not impact the holder's ability to own or living. I don't know what that case is, so I ain't even going to read it because that, that's stupid. Um, it goes to one's right to earn a living. Okay? The right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness includes the right to work and earn an honest living, but it does not include the right to work for any particular individual without the latter's consent. In other words, you don't have the right to just go to somebody and say, I'm going to work for you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. That's what they're saying. All right, we're going to go back one because I need to show you all this. Then we're going to move on with the moving on, moving on. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the plaintiff is entitled to earn a living. Preserve citizens' right to a customary means of earning a living. Earning, earning, scout over here! The right to earn a living by engaging in the common calling is a fundamental right which the law must jealously protect. Then we're going to go the right to earn a living pursuing ordinary course of operation in the Constitution. I need, I'm looking for one particular case, so give me one second, y'all. Hmm. What was it, Montana? I think it was Montana. Give me a second to see if I can find that Montana case. Because I want to show you all something about that Montana case. That's Texas, Ohio, uh, Fifth Circuit. Come on now. Eighth News. George. Montana. Okay, that ain't the one. It ain't Utah. You know what? I think. Nope, it, it's not this. It's this one. Give me a second. Nope, not that either. I don't know which one it is, y'all. What's another it is? It's got to be funky. Nope, ain't this either. It is a case that spoke about 
the same thing as Redfield versus Fisher. So y'all hold on. I apologize. It is Montana, and it is a 1933 case. O'Connell, O'Connell, oh, O'Connell, get on over here. And the Board of Equalization Only, shin, shin, shin. okay? Notice what it says. Now pay attention, because Redfield versus Fisher around the same time, 1930, said the same thing. But there can be no tax upon a man's right to live and earn his bread by the sweat of his brow or the sweat of his head, even if it were regulated by an excise tax. The law is that an individual's right to live and to own property are natural rights for the enjoyment of which no tax, excise or otherwise, can be imposed. The mere right to hold and own such property cannot be made into a privilege. Let's see if it says privilege. I'm pretty certain that's what it says. I read it. I did a video earlier, but I referenced another video, and I went and listened to that video a little bit more in depth, y'all. Let me make sure y'all understand. It wasn't as in-depth as I thought it could be. Give me one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I went into the case. Notice what it says. Here, let us place our feet upon the solid ground. Section 3 of Article 3 of our state's constitution declares that all persons are born equally free, have certain natural, essential, and inalienable rights among which may be reckoned the right to enjoyment and defending their lives and liberties of acquiring possession and protecting property and of seeking and obtaining their safety and happiness in all lawful ways. People may be required to pay taxes for the support of the government which secures to them, pay attention, which secures to them these inalienable rights. But there can be no tax upon a man's right to live and earn his bread by the sweat of his brow or the spread of the brow of his head. Even if it was regarded as an excise tax, the law is that the individual's right to live and own property are natural rights. For the enjoyment of which an excise cannot be imposed. The mere right to hold and own such property cannot be made subject to an excise. So why are you people paying property taxes? Let me say that again. Why are you people paying property taxes? Now, this was New Hampshire that said this in this case, but this is Montana that's verifying it in this case because the law is the same in every state because the right to property and the right to life is the same in every state. So why are you paying property taxes? So again, ladies and gentlemen, the Usage Tax Act as a matter of fact, I'm pretty certain that there is a such thing. Watch, let's do this. Okay, come on now. Usage, U-S-A-G-E, like sausage, usage, tax. Let's get that right there and let's put that C-T, tick tock tick. And I know we're gonna have to do a, con uh, a word search because usage tax act, that's too short. Now look, the motor vehicle usage tax now and since its inception has levied a usage tax on every motor vehicle used in this state, subject to certain exemptions. Whoa, so all of you guys are paying the DMV to let you use your so-called vehicles? You're paying the state for the use? of the address like i told you in this state they don't want to give me an address because i live in a rural area and they want me to ask for permission fill out an application i told them uh no you better go ask your mama for permission you better ask your mama for an application and we're getting ready to have an understanding on that it's going to come to a head but i'm willing to let it come there ladies and gentlemen Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, doing this video to help some of you better understand taxes, let you know that you got to do your own homework, your own homework and your own research. All right, I got work to do. I'm about to go lay down for an hour. I had to go a hundred and some miles today to go pick up mail. Like I said, problem with the post office. So y'all, y'all take care. I'm out.